Hey guys, Jake Blow here, the Habitat Pro. We're coming to you from a client property today in Wisconsin. And what I'd like to do is bring you through a complete area, about a half day project, where we came in, we did the cutting as it related to the previous design that we did on this property. So I'm gonna show you from start to finish what this area is with hunting location as it relates to a travel corridor, as that travel corridor relates to a bedding area behind us as that bedding area relates to a food source and i'm going to show you a lot in this one video hopefully some of it sticks as always guys if this video is of any help to you please smash that subscribe button down there hit the notifications so you get notified every time we put up a new video this channel is for everything habitat without further ado let's get started on this tour okay to get this started there's an easy access stand location cabin is right downhill about 150 yards and with the food plot to camera right about 300 yards from here that's an easy morning access stand i'll show you another one that we have right near water hole but that's a good one for us now the reason that's there is because it's 25 yards away from a hole in the fence there's an old barbed wire four strand cattle fence right there and what i had the owner do is cut that open and then what we'll do is bring the brush mower through there, get rid of the prickly ash, give them a trail in here, and then we're gonna free up these couple of white pine saplings here so bucks can continue to rub on those. And then do a little nook of a food plot right here that begins his journey around this bedding area to get downwind of it. Now, when we build properties, you wanna start with a design all the time and you're always beginning with stand locations when you build these areas because the edges you set up are gonna give you your shooting lane at the end. Okay, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But what we're walking right here is what a buck would walk to check that bedding area with the wind in his face after looping around and coming right up through here. So we'll be right back in that little gap in just a moment as we come through. But I wanted to show you the corridor first Everything to camera right is screened in. A lot of box elder were dropped last year in the winter. So we've got a good wall of cover there between the road and us. And then here's where we opened it up just a little bit for a little nugget of a food plot. Probably go with Ronda Pretty Alfalfa in here because we've got so much thistle. You can see there's our earth blind water hole. One of the exits right there to the bedding area and another exit to come in here. And right, we had another one right there. And then the grapevine licking branch. Stand location is to camera right, right behind the wall of cover. Be right in there in just a moment. We are still on the food plot travel corridor. Um, I should say something about these decapitated trees here. Uh, the reason we did that is because those will stump sprout now. Those are all box elder. And when they stump sprout, there'll be food, but I needed to get sunlight in here for the food plot. So since those were leaning over it, that screening was done last year to hide the house. Got a couple of second story windows. That's why I went high with the hinge cuts over there. Okay, so bedding area is still the camera left. And now what you're gonna see here is why this buck is back here in the first place. Okay, so you see the big 360 blind 7x7 seven seven shooting house out there with about a three acre food plot, I think it is, full of everything. There's about 15 different plants out there every year, real secure. And this lets them get there, but we've stopped here because we've already scent checked the food plot. With the wind in the face coming from that direction right there, all of that food plot scent would come up flowing through here and that makes this location this staging plot a very valuable area to them okay so here's another out we'll be right in there in just a moment you got to have outs to all your bedding areas so here we go i'm going to zip through this i'm just going to say bed when we have a bedding spot that's prepped um i haven't found good luck clearing beds out and leaving them black dirt because it just grows too fast bed bed so what i do is i'll plant clover in the bed 
or grass in the bed because I've found, especially up north, bedding nook. Bedding nook in there. Obviously a lot of cleanup here, but we did all the cutting so the owner could come in with his kids and clean it up and build their fort. Okay, so we're gonna be right back in here in just a moment. So remember that double box elder there splayed open. I'm gonna head back around this way. Bed. 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 I haven't found that deer really gravitate towards bare dirt bedding. They kind of make it on bed. Bed. They kind of make it on their own if it's a valuable location. Bed. Bed. Because they'll end up laying down there so much that leaves just don't grow there or leaves don't fall there and nothing will grow there. That's an out. And then you can see we have an out behind us. And we also have an out this way through the prickly ash that they've always used. Okay, I'm going to show you that little nook in the center. And then come back around the outside. Just building a white tail fort here is all you're doing. So there's that splayed box elder. You can see in here we've got a couple of bedrooms. Bed. Bed. Okay, this is another in off of the food plot, water hole area. Okay, this is the other side of this bedding area. I didn't cut that one open. I gotta cut that. This is an area I wanted to highlight. And you notice I have a box elder that's alive and a cherry that probably won't survive, but it's up on two live trees. And then this box elder will definitely live. So here is a nook where they have an option of having a ton of overhead cover. Um, I think we need to get away from this either or nonsense when you talk about overhead cover, side cover, bedding areas and all that kind of stuff. It's just nonsense if you give deer everything then some deer sometimes will lay right there it's another bed there's another bed that log isn't there for any reason that's just a nice flat spot they'll lay down right there if they want to be out in the open and then if they want overhead cover then they also have it but if you don't provide it because you watched some video that said deer never like overhead cover well what if they want it that day that's where we came from before Here's another little nook right there. Okay, giving them a way through that box elder. And then we should probably provide them a way out right there as well. That'll be something hopefully that we can do with the loppers. Okay, and then you can't see it from this side, but I dropped this box elder to be a gray zone in front of that huge ash, big ash tree. <laughs> out down the fence line down to our stand location down there and then right here is another one under overhead cover north side of the tree okay and then coming through here a couple of my favorite areas that they're just gonna love okay so then this one would be side cover i suppose you could say a little bit of overhead cover but it's not intentional um with the prickly ash here it will form a little bit of an overhead cover but that spot right there is going to be dynamite as will, I think, this one. Okay, there's another bed. A little bit of overhead cover. And then right here, that one's fantastic because all he has to do, he, she, I'm not sure, buck or doe. With the wind at his back, he can look downhill through all of this, see the whole travel corridor, anything coming up, and then he can piece out into the bedding area if he doesn't like what he sees.
And then here's one of the entries into this area. There's another bed by a big white pine. And then that's another looking downhill spot right there, a little bit of overhead cover. So I guess the easiest analogy is, would you ever build a house with no roof on it? Oh well, no, that's silly. And that's down to the travel corridor. Would you ever build a house with no outdoor living space where you could sit in the sun? Well, no, that'd be silly too. So why do we argue about overhead cover versus side cover? There's another one of those nooks going in. And another couple of things that I learned from Jim Ward or Jake Ellinger or both. I can't remember. But what I ended up having to do in here was take down a couple of cherries. So all I did was decapitate them because now they'll stump sprout and be food in this bedding area. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that little tour of this little half acre project that we did in about a half a day. Um, the biggest part here, guys, is you got to start with a grand design. You have to know where is our food source. You've got to know where are we hunting. Then you've got to relate a travel corridor to a bedding area. There's just no other way to do it. You don't just want to go in and start dropping stuff without a plan because you only get one chance to drop a tree. You only get one chance to do a timber harvest. You want to make darn sure it's in the right spots. If that is intimidating to you, give me a call. Send me an email. That's what I love to do. This is Jake Lowe, the Habitat Pro. We are in central Wisconsin today, base camped in northern Minnesota. Get out and enjoy creation, guys. God bless.